All right, class, next topic, dispersion. So we're gonna to try to estimate the longitudinal dispersion of um, our solute tracer within our study reach. And we'll look tonight at a couple of ways of doing this. And so first up is a series of empirical estimates. Uh, and so this is the exact same strategy that we used when we were working on mixing lengths. The idea that if we know something about the characteristics of flow in the system, something about the geometry of the system, uh, we can estimate a longitudinal dispersion coefficient d. Uh, there are plenty of ways to do this. Um, I'm just showing you one popular estimate. Um, this comes from Fisher. Uh, we looked at the Fisher textbook, uh, Mixing in Inland and Coastal Waters, um, a bit earlier in this class. So longitudinal dispersion d is equal to 0 0.0011 multiplied by. So up in the numerator, we've got um, the velocity squared, u squared, the width of the channel squared, or b squared, and down in the denominator we've got the average depth h, and that's multiplied by this quantity u star, which is the shear velocity. And you'll remember the shear velocity is the square root of the gravitational constant times the depth times s, or the longitudinal slope of the channel. So there are plenty of empirical um, estimates out there for dispersion. Uh, this particular one is based generally on larger rivers. Um, you can find to this day a cottage industry of folks um, who try to create dimensionless relationships or scaling relationships for longitudinal dispersion. So this is one way that we can go about this. Uh, the second is model fitting, and this is strictly inverse modeling meaning you're trying to adjust the model coefficients to make the model prediction match the data. So for a pulse injection, um, we can use the advection dispersion equation in a fairly simple application. Um, so the time series of concentration C uh, at a distance of delta x downstream can be calculated with the equation shown here. Uh, and in this equation, the M in the numerator is the mass that you injected. A is the cross-sectional area of the stream channel. Um, v is velocity. T is time. And of course, D is that dispersion coefficient. Uh, and note that there should be a one-half power um, on that quantity in the parentheses. And so that, in other words, is the square root of that quantity. I've just added that in the bright green pen. So the idea here is that you know the mass, you know the cross-sectional area, you now have estimated the velocity. Uh, and so what you're going to do is use some kind of curve fitting algorithm or just a guess and check process to adjust that dispersion coefficient until what you model matches what you've observed. So this process might look something like this plotting my observed data at the downstream end in purple, uh, and then using Excel or R, Python, my favorite programming languages, um, to solve this equation for a concentration time series at a distance of delta x away. If what I get back is this orange curve, that's too spread out, and so I know that my dispersion coefficient was too high. I should guess a smaller number. If I get back this green curve, my dispersion was too small. The peak stayed very high. It didn't spread out enough as it traveled through the study reach. So that would tell me I need to pick a larger dispersion. Uh, and when I get back a curve that is perhaps minimizing R squared or RMSE, root mean square error, that's how I know I've got an optimal dispersion coefficient for my system. So we can fit using empirical models. We can also fit using the advection dispersion equation in this inverse modeling application. At the conclusion of this video, you ought to know two different ways to estimate longitudinal dispersion coefficients and be prepared to do that for the data we're working with. Thanks, everybody.